Okay, this is going to give you a little preview to the types of problems that will be on your final exam. These are all of the topics that will be covered on the exam. Polynomials, you have to be able to both multiply and factor. Quadratics, be able to write in vertex form, find the vertex, axis of symmetry, find all intercepts, be able to graph them, and you should know all three methods to solve for x in any quadratic. Then all of the work with radicals, simplifying them, rationalizing, solving, and complex numbers. When we have a negative underneath the radical, that becomes an i, and you should know how to simplify everything with the i. And the last topic we had this year was all of our fractions, our rational expressions. All right, let's start with a polynomial. If you were given this polynomial, could you expand that? Raise this to the second power, distribute the three. The first thing I would do is rewrite it so I don't have an exponent. I would write that set of parentheses out twice. Next, I would multiply these two sets of parentheses. Getting this answer, combining like terms, and the final step would be to distribute that three. So this would be your answer. And working the other way, we have factoring. We start off with this, we're gonna factor it. Well, we are gonna multiply the six times the 10, get 60x squared. We are then looking for factors of this that do this right here, subtract to give you this middle term. So we are going to change that negative 11 using these two factors. So instead of having a negative 11x, it's going to be a negative 15x, and then it is going to be a positive 4x. One's negative, one's positive, because at the end you have a negative sign. Negative means your signs are different. Once you have this, you are going to work with two terms at a time. So look at these first two terms. What do they have in common? What is their GCF? Well, we can take out a 3x. We then write what's left when we divide by 3x. We have 2x minus 5. Go to the next two terms. What do we have for G GCF here with 4x minus 10? Well, we have a 2. Take out a 2, that leaves you with 2x minus 5. If both sets of parentheses match, you know that you did this problem correctly. So one set of parentheses for factoring is that matching set of parentheses. The other set is what you factored out, the 3x and the positive 2. And that's how you factor it. All right, let's try this one. To factor this one, this is a special case. There's two terms with a minus sign. Everything's perfect squares, so this is called the difference of two squares. That's how you would factor this one. What number squared is 25? That's the 5. Cut the exponent in half, 8 of the second. What number squared is 36? That's the 6. All right, next we go to the quadratics. If you were given this function, could you write it in vertex form? Well, we keep the terms with the x's together. We put the negative eight outside the parentheses. Go back here to the linear term. You take half of that, half of four is two. Two squared is four. That's what we put in this blank. And whatever we add, we also have to subtract so that we keep it equal. Add 4, subtract 4. Now this right here is going to factor into parentheses squared. And inside those parentheses, we are going to put x minus 2. We can put that together here. Sorry about that. 
And then after the parentheses, we combine that negative 8 and that negative 4, the negative 12. That's vertex form. Once we have something in vertex form, it makes it a lot easier for the vertex. So can you state the vertex given this equation of the parabola? Well, your vertex is 2, negative 12. And can you name the axis of symmetry? Remember, axis of symmetry is a vertical line. And that is an equation you have to have an equal sign. So it's x equals 2. You don't just write 2. All righty, can you solve? Well, when you're given a quadratic equation, you were taught three different methods to solve. The first step is you have to set it equal to zero. So we would have to subtract that four. So we would have an x squared plus our five x. When we subtract four, we would now have it eight. So it's equal to zero. It doesn't factor, and the linear term is not even, so I would go for the quadratic formula. That's what we get when we plug everything in. Our a is 1, our b is 5, our c is 8. And then we have to simplify those numbers. It's going to leave us with this. And then we subtract underneath the radical. We get that. That's not our final answer because we're not allowed to have a negative underneath the radical sign. Take out that negative as an I, and there's your final answer. All right, next, moving on to everything we did with radicals. Fractional exponents like this one, negative one half, means you have a radical. Negative means you're moving it to the top. So it becomes this. You move it, you lose the negative sign. And now, what does that equal? Square root of 16, which equals 4. When you are working with negatives underneath the radical, you have to simplify each one of them. You cannot multiply with the negatives underneath. So simplify each radical. Gives you this. And then we can multiply all of that. We get 48i. One more problem with radicals, simplifying this. Do a factor tree. You're looking for three of the same number. And for the variable, you divide the exponent by three. Leaves you with that for an answer. And the last topic on your final is our most recent topic, everything we did with fractions. So given this problem, what's the first thing you're going to do? Well, that's going to be to factor everything. So we factor every term. We remember division right here means you flip the second fraction, you change to multiplication. Gives you this when you factor everything. Then after you factor it all, you cross off what matches on top and bottom. Crossed off everything, leaves you with this for your final answer. Good luck on the final exam, everyone.